Okay, uh, good evening everyone. It's the Marion Township Board of Supervisors meeting for Thursday, June 25th, 2020. Uh, the time is now 7.08 p.m. I'm gonna call the meeting to order. Uh, we're doing these meetings remotely over Zoom because of the COVID-19 stay-at-home order from Governor Wolf. Uh, we normally do the Pledge of Allegiance while in the building, but because of the, the venue of being a telepresence like this, we are going to omit it. Um, so the, the first item up is to approve the minutes of the May 28th, 2020 Board of Supervisors meeting. Uh, for anybody that would be interested in it, I can put into the chat the, the meeting agendas are all up. Uh, actually, the minutes and the agendas are up on the, the shared Google Drive uh, for anybody to see. So I will, I will put that in there now. That way, if anybody would like to follow along or view, they certainly can. Having had a chance to review those minutes earlier, I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Is that Jim? Second, yes. Okay. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of the June 20th, 2020 workshop meeting. I'll motion to approve. I'll second. <laughs> Irene got it. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item up on the agenda is to approve the payment of bills for June 2020. I'll second that. Uh, I was going to say, I'll make the motion. <laughs> <laughs> Irene Turner. second. Roll call. Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, at this time, uh, we'll open the floor to public comments. Uh, Sue, did we receive any ahead of time in the email? No, there were none. Okay, so I'm going to scroll through the people that are on video and see if anybody is, okay, Dan's, Dan's raising his hand, so I will ask Dan to unmute. Yeah, Peter, uh, Stonecroft residents would like to know where we stand on the signs for the corner. So I've actually got good news. That's one of the, the items that we're going to be talking about on the agenda. We, oh, have, we ordered the signs. We actually picked them up yesterday. And now that we have them in hand within the next couple of days, we're going to be going out and measuring based on the, uh, the requirements as, uh, keep me honest, Andy, off the top of my head, that's title, is that uh, title set or pub 75 for, for the road stuff? Uh, yeah, it's the motor vehicle code. Yeah, title yeah. 75. Yeah, so we're, we're going to go out and we're going to measure mm -hmm. and mark based on what's prescribed in there. And we're going to post the signs. Super. We appreciate it. Yeah, everything we can do to help, we're happy to do it. And that's a, thankfully, nice, relatively easy one in the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I don't see anybody else raising their hand. So we'll, we'll get into the items for discussion. Uh, first item on the agenda is the emergency declaration. Uh, this was made at the March Board of Supervisors meeting with a provision to extend for a period lasting until further action by the board. Uh, seeing as Burks was just put back into that green state, I'm inclined to play this one cautiously and uh, continue to keep that in place for the time being. Uh, Irene, Jim, what are your thoughts around that? Um, yes, I would definitely play it safe for now from what I'm seeing at work. Okay. I agree. Okay. In that case, we, we need to take no action on that. That will stay in place until we decide to rescind it. The next item on the agenda, uh, there were a couple of uh, errors that Sue, in uh, her, her diligent work of going back through and getting things ready for this month's meeting, noticed uh, that in the note taking, the minutes should have read the minutes of March 26, 2020 Board of Supervisors meeting were distributed to the board members prior to the meeting. And then the section about the motion, Peter T. McCarthy made a motion seconded by Irene Seleski to approve the March 26, 2020 meetings. On a roll call, Peter McCarthy, aye. Irene, aye. Jim, aye. Motion unanimous and carried. Uh, so we'll be making the correction. We just have to uh, motion and approve that correction to the minutes. Um, I just I just forgot to put the motion on. Yeah. So the, the, the actual substance of it was there, just the roll call was not. Um, so I'll make a motion to accept the, the revision to the minutes. Second. Okay. 
Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Thank you for catching that. Well, yeah. I found another one too. Yep. And say so there was a, a little bit of a typo. Uh, the section around Wintersville Road and School Road should actually have been Wintersville and Stouchburg Road. We have stuff going on at, at both places, but uh, we're actually in that, that particular instance referring to Wintersville and Stouchburg Road for that intersection. So I'll, I'll make the motion to accept the, the update to the minutes to reflect the, the change from Wintersville Road and School Road to Wintersville and Stouchburg Road. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda is uh, we received a complaint from uh, the resident at 979 William Penn Boulevard about stormwater running off of his property uh, from, or onto his property from the field uh, south of William Penn Boulevard and uh, through a pipe under the road. It's causing a, a washout on his driveway and flooding his basement. Uh, he sent over numerous pictures illustrating the issue, and uh, I think our, our next step really should be to get McCarthy Engineering out there to review what the, the drainage situation is at that property. Peter, he is actually on the Zoom meeting tonight. Oh, oh fantastic. Uh, let me see if I can scroll through and find him. Kenny Weidenheimer. There, there he is. So I'm going to actually, I'm, Kenny, I'm going to send you a, an unmute. So if you, you need to click something to unmute, if you'd like to, to, to speak to that point with uh, your property, I'm, I'm all ears. Can you hear me? Absolutely, loud and clear, sir. Uh, what do you need to know? Well, if you beyond what I've said uh, in terms of the washout, drainage, flooding situation at your home, um, I think the the pictures that you sent paint a marvelous picture of the issue that you're <laughs> facing. Um, so I, I think our next step is to authorize McCarthy Engineering to go out and review what the actual drainage situation is and right. see what can be done to correct it. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I don't really don't know anybody. Uh, you almost got to see it. You know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. yeah, it's pretty bad, and it's actually getting worse every time we get a rain. It seems to get. I think we lost Kenny there. <laughs> um, we'll, we'll give him a second to see if he uh, comes back in. I think he might have a network connection issue. Do we still have you, Kenny? I just see it's frozen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, while we're while we're waiting on that, I'm I'm going to make a motion to authorize McCarthy Engineering to go out and review, and then give us a report on what what we need to do to correct it. You second on that. Irene, was that a second? Yes. Roll call, Peter. Hi. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Do you want me to call Jim? Do you want to call Jim? Um, I have an email chain going with him. I can just email him and let him know that we want him to go out. I, okay. I, I had let him know that that's probably going to be the, the takeaway on that, but to hold off until after the meeting. Okay. Good enough. Do we know the back of our pipe? It's, as far as I know, yeah, because it's on uh, the, it's not on the state portion of the road. Okay. But I, I would think it. Go ahead. I would I would think that's ours, but that should probably be the first thing that's verified. Yeah, yeah, I believe well, just in the the interchange that I had via email with Jim uh, originally, he was he was thinking that it was on four twenty two, in which case it certainly would not be ours. And mm -hmm. I think that's far enough removed from any of the other, like for example, the bridge, that's not ours. Mm -hmm. um, that it's it's more than likely going to be something that we have to deal with, but it, he should be able to identify that pretty quick. Yeah. Okay. Um, Kenny's back. Okay. I'm going to unmute him again. Can you hear me? Yep. Hi, Kenny. So uh, I think you disconnected there for a second. The only thing that I, you is... Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it happens. Um, so uh, we're going to send McCarthy Engineering out to look at it and okay. figure out what the, the next step forward is to try to get that corrected. Okay. Okay. Well, thank, thank you okay. very much for bringing that to our attention. And we'll, we'll I appreciate it. get it expediently resolved for you. Thank you. Okay. Next item on the agenda, unless there's any additional points that uh, you have, Irene or Jim or Andy. 
is the uh, Zoncroft Dairy Letter of Credit. Uh, all items are complete, and the as-built plant was recorded in December of 2019. Uh, McCarthy Engineering is recommending the release in full of the letter of credit, totaling $20,743.93. I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, the next item on the agenda is uh, we received a call from uh, Dennis Sadison at 3993 Smaltz Road uh, asking if a sign could be posted south of the driveway at Zoncroft Dairy. There is a pretty sharp turn there on a small hill south of his driveway. And uh, during the, the warmer part of the year where there's cron, uh, corn being grown in that field, visibility is extremely poor uh, at that driveway. Um, he's asked that we post a um, hidden driveway sign there, which I'm, I'm not opposed to. Um, I want to get your thoughts around if that should fall squarely into kind of our wheelhouse as the municipality or if that's something that we should potentially broach with the property owner as a, kind of a split the difference to, in terms of the advertising cost and the, the posting of the sign. He did say to me that he was willing to put up a, a temporary sign, um, but he just was you know, letting us know that there's an issue there and, and he didn't know what the regulations are for him to put up a temporary sign. Yeah, I think technically speaking, probably not supposed to. <laughs> um, <laughs> Right, there are no regulations about that. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, only, um, the only regulations are that, you know, the township does it via ordinance. Unfortunately, I was trying to look for a shortcut and I looked at it a little bit and then I, I have an inquiry out to Jim too to see how, if he has a different way to go about it. But yeah, this would be by ordinance and there's no other way around it that I've found. So it's like a yield to pedestrian sign, hidden driveway ahead, school zone, you know, it's kind of like a warning type traffic sign. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, I'm not opposed to doing it. The, the question really just becomes, how do we want to approach it? Do we want to just do that as a, as a public safety thing? Or do we want to try to work with him on, like, if you, if you buy the sign, we'll, we'll pay for the ordinance. I'd prefer to do it as an ordinance because if the use, property changes, uh, hands, things like that, if the issue continues to remain a problem despite who owns the property, mm -hmm. I'd rather have it as an ordinance rather than having it, and, and our cost, rather than having it relate back to the property owner. Because mm -hmm. the property owner may say, well, I paid for this, I'm no longer here, but is the issue still a continuing issue despite who owns the property? So I'd rather for us to pay for it outright, have ownership of it, and this way it doesn't matter who owns the property or their use of the property. If it continues to be a hazard, I'd rather we are the ones that regulate that hazard. I, I agree. And for what it's worth, even if it was a situation, what, I'm, what I was proposing, if, if yeah. they contributed the sign, is the sign became township property. That was part of, mm -hmm. the, part of the deal for getting that put in. Mm -hmm. um, with that said, the sign is probably the, the least expensive component yeah. of that. I know the, the no parking signs that we just got were, were not expensive at all. Yeah. So um, if you guys are in agreement with that, I, I'm not opposed to the request. I say we do it, um, especially because the last thing we want to have somebody have happen is get T-Bone driving out of the driveway. That's kind of the whole reason that we're going to be putting up those no parking signs near Stonecroft and on, on Main Street. He did say with their personal vehicles, like his pickup truck, and I think his wife has a minivan, they almost got hit, but the milk truck was pulling out and almost got hit. I mean, the milk truck is a little taller, a little bigger, you know, but mm. it's it's kind of hard to see there when the corn's yeah. tall. Yeah. Okay, so I, I'll make the motion to authorize Andy to draw up the ordinance and advertise for the placement of the hidden driveway sign at uh, the south uh, portion of the driveway at Zoncroft Dairy. I'll second that motion. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. And you, usually, usually those signs are um, put into an ordinance as like a certain number of feet from an intersection 
is there any uh, way that we could measure it from like the existing driveway or from an intersection that would be closed? Is there any intersection that's closed? Well, the, close, the closest intersection would probably be 422 and small. Because the next intersection would be school and small. They're, they're kind of like in between. Right. I'll see if I can get you a measurement on that, on that, Andy. Okay. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the Jacob Weiss poultry operation letter of credit uh, based on the site inspection. McCarthy engineers, uh, en excuse me, engineering recommends the third reduction of the letter of credit of $20,458. Uh, the amount to be retained as $45,578. I'll make a motion to approve that. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, the next item on the agenda is the School Road and Wintersville Road culvert. Uh, the work has been completed. Construction Master Services, uh, the company that did the work, is requesting payment number two in the amount of 6000 $361.05. Uh, if you look in your uh, the Google Drive, the link that I sent out earlier, uh, attachment number seven is that that statement of work and the, the request for payment. So as soon as we actually have that in hand, which I believe at this point we do other than the email, um, it, I read it. It's sent by email, that's all we got. Uh, okay, so they're not actually mailing something in. No. Um, okay, so Irene, we should be able to process that as a payment? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll authorize our motion to authorize the payment uh, of six thousand three hundred and sixty-one dollars and five cents to Construction Master Services for the School Road and Wintersville Road culvert project. I'll second that. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is the uh, resolution 2020-6 uh, to pay bills at, uh, I would say, probably atypical intervals throughout the month. Uh, this is a pretty common occurrence from what Irene found and what we uh, discussed briefly with, uh, with Andy previously. Um, Andy or Irene, do you want to maybe just give a, a quick recap on uh, really what this particular resolution is, is going to allow us to do and why we're, why we're doing it? Sure. Um, Go ahead. So what, what this does, it, it just allows the, the, the township to pay some bills uh, in between meetings. So these bills would be bills that might be due um, prior to the next meeting coming up and prior to an official vote being had to pay them. So um, we don't want to incur late fees. We want to be, you know, prompt payors of bills. So this will allow us to do that. And then um, at the following meeting, those payments would be approved and ratified by the board. So it, they would pass through a meeting. Mm -hmm. It's just that we're, we're doing to be proactive and to not have the township incur any uh, late fees or penalties. Okay, thank you. Very, very good explanation. You did it more justice than I would have been able to. <laughs> uh, it just uh, basically it lets us be a little more agile in how we're paying bills, so that we don't have uh, checks crossing in the mail and MedEd uh, getting upset with us about not paying the electric bill and things like that. Um, so I'll, I'll make a motion to accept resolution twenty twenty dash six. I'll second that. <laughs> 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 Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, the next item on the agenda is QuickBooks. Uh, we hired uh, an outside firm to do a review and some remedial work on the QuickBooks. Uh, right now, they have incurred 14 hours out of the 40 that we authorized. And uh, based on some of those things, we are going to a uh, bare minimum attempt to break for an executive session. Uh, so if I set this up correctly, what should happen is the, the board will be split into a separate conference for a brief period of time, and everybody else that is here will be in their own room by themselves. Uh, so we're going to give this a try, and we're going to see what happens.
you want me to join or do you not want me to join? Is it asking you to join? Yeah. Okay, please join. Okay. How about me, Peter? Uh, you should, if, if you hit join, it will go into your, it should be an other, a room called other. So preliminarily, that looked like that worked. Nice yeah. job. Yeah, Yay. we'll see. We'll see. That's that's the first half of the magic trick. The second half <laughs> is getting everybody back. No, um, this should not be recorded. Yeah, so I'm I'm gonna pause the recording now because it is still recording at this point in time, and then we're gonna resume when we break executive session. Okay, welcome back, everyone. Looks like the the breakout room settings that I I set up were successful. Uh, the executive session was used to discuss uh, matters of potential litigation. Uh, we'll likely have additional discussion at next month's meeting in a, a similar format to decide the, the final result of how we're going to proceed with that. Uh, but for the time being, the, the best thing that we can say is the, uh, simply that we're discussing potential litigation. Um, so moving on to the next item on the agenda, the website. Uh, we completed the, the framework design on it, and it's been handed over to the, the next stage of development. Um, I'm going to be in contact with Civic CMS about that, the actual population of the website itself, and uh, the subsequent publishing to our domain name that I picked up. Um, as time progresses, I got to sit down with uh, Sue and Jim and Irene. Um, we have a, a new domain name in place. It's MarionTWPBurks.com. The site presently, if you try to go there, will point to our old website. Um, and uh, we have new email addresses and forwards set up around that. And there's a, a lot of back end sophistication that we're, we're able to leverage now from, from having that. Um, the Google Drive is a perfect example of that. Uh, I put a link in the chat earlier uh, in the meeting where there's a public directory where we're going to be posting any meeting notes, uh, agendas, uh, ordinances, resolutions, things like that for public record. Um, and uh, on the back end of things, that's uh, we can also use that to do like text message notifications for certain ordinances. Um, had touched on it a little bit at a, a previous meeting, where if you're out and you notice a pothole, you'd be able to text roads to the Marion Township phone number, and it would deliver an email to the main mailbox as well as potentially me as the roadmaster saying, "Hey, there's a pothole at this intersection." So uh, we're looking forward to getting a lot of that set up. the The website is kind of the the, the keystone behind a lot of that. And uh, I'm looking forward to, to trying to get a lot of the neat stuff set up once we have that in place. Any questions, Irene, Jim, Sue? I'm no, just looking to, forward to updating our, our ability to um, store information and uh, get our computer system into the 21st century. Yeah, <laughs> one of the nice things we're gonna be able to do, the, the website calendar should be directly integrated to the, the Google calendar that we have for that, that office at uh, Marion TWP Burks email address. So we can have a, a central calendar where we put like the, the garbage and uh, recycling collection up, planning commission meetings, uh, the supervisors meetings that we're going to be eventually once we're back in the office streaming to, to YouTube via Zoom. All that will be there. You can go to the website, you can click it and you can you can either get the reminder or you in the case of the meetings could join directly from that, that calendar link. Um, we also have the ability then to set up reminders that people could sign up for, for text message notifications or emails or all sorts of neat stuff. Thank you. Okay. So next item on the agenda, if we don't have any further questions or comments or concerns on the website, is the Wintersville Road and Stouchburg Road intersection ordinance. Uh, this was a complaint that was brought to us by a homeowner around trucks making that turn there. It is far too sharp of a turn and causes obstructions in the oncoming traffic lanes. Uh, McCarthy Engineering went out and determined exactly that. Tractor trailers cannot accomplish the turn without encroaching into the oncoming lanes of traffic or encroaching onto private property outside of the existing right of way. Uh, Solicitor George drew up the ordinance for signage prohibiting the trucks from turning in that intersection. Uh, the enactment notice was posted on the outside bulletin on June the 16th and was advertised in the Reading Eagle uh, on June 17th. We need to ask Jackson Township, and uh, I'll make the, the corresponding phone call once we enact the, the ordinance around that if we do that tonight. Um, to post signs near Route 422 on Wintersville Road. That way we, we handle truck traffic from the opposite direction as well. Um, additionally, the property owner will need to remove or relocate the boulders that he has placed there to try to, to prevent people from turning um, to outside of the right-of-way as they, they pose a hazard and a liability to, 
to, to us and, and really anybody that uses that road. Um, so I'll, I'll make a motion to adopt the Wintersville Road and Stouchburg Road intersection ordinance. I'll second. Okay. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda. <clears throat> Okay, uh, the road projects for 2020, uh, Franklin went out and reviewed the sections that are going to need remediation through overlay with uh, Reber and Zerbe. Um, the, the quote that we got from them, I believe has a typo on it. So I don't wanna, I don't wanna make the motion to approve it necessarily tonight, um, but I wanna check to see if this is legit. Um, for Sheridan Road, they quoted $27,200 of remedial work on that road. And I want to make sure that's correct, uh, considering the other two were considerably less than that. Um, beyond that, uh, it's something that we need to do um, prior to putting down any, any oil and chip on those roads as it simply will not stick if it's uh, a poor substrate to, to adhere to. Um, the next step would be once, I once after I confirm the, the, the price is, is or is not a typo, um, would be to get a couple additional estimates for work for next month's meeting. Mm -hmm. um, so look that over and consider it. And that's something that we will, we will touch on then, uh, hopefully with the intent of moving forward quickly on that so that we can get the oil and shipping in still before the end of the year. Okay, next item on the agenda is the agreement with Pulpahawken Township to store the salt, the, the excess salt from our CoStars contract. Uh, Andy was kind enough to send over the, um, the, the resolution and the uh, intermunicipal agreement prior to the meeting. Uh, both of them are up as attachment number 13 in the Google Drive. Um, based on the, the couple of last minute changes that were circulated later stage of the day, um, I think it's good to go. We, have, we corrected the, the bit about the tonnage and uh, the, the means of communicating to the secretary being you know, email as appropriate. Um. Yeah, I actually, at, at the end, I put the, that the roadmaster just informs uh, the other roadmaster via email within 24 hours of wanting access to it. Okay. Is that that's, an issue or do we no, want, no, do I don't we think, want that to come from something? I don't think that's a problem. No, that's, that's something with that me as the roadmaster, if we know we need it, I can, I can call them more than 24 hours ahead of time. That should be fine. Yeah. Okay. okay you want to make sure it's in a written format, whether email or written. This way, there's a record of it. Yeah. Someone could easily say yeah. I didn't get the phone call. Yeah, I'm professionally. I'm in the mm -hmm. habit of doing both. Like if I call somebody at work, I'll I'll follow up with an email either while I'm talking to them on the phone or immediately thereafter, so they have something in writing. And that's just again, that's professional habit. That's good. And by the way, th this has already been approved, believe it or not, by uh, Popahawken Township solicitor. So oh. that was a problem. Oh. Late, late this nice. Afternoon. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Well, in that case, I'll I'll motion to approve on the, the Marion Township side of thing for the uh, intermunicipal agreement. Second. <laughs> you want to do the? Do you want to do separate motions for the resolution and agreement, or what are you doing? Yeah. I usually do them as separate. So yeah, that one's for the the intermunicipal agreement. Okay. So Peter, motion. Who second? Is that Jim? Jim, did you? Yes, sir. Okay. Sir. Sure. Uh, roll call, Peter. <clears throat> Aye. Irene. Aye. <clears throat> Jim. <clears throat> Aye. Okay. When you're ready, Sue, I'll make the next motion. I'm ready. I'll, I'll make a motion to approve the resolution for uh, the salt storage with Tulpa Hawken. Okay. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item on the agenda is cold patch. Uh, not to dwell too long on this point, we got two loads of cold patch earlier in the year. 
we have used all of it up. We still have additional potholes. Uh, so we're ultimately going to need at least two more loads. So I'm, I'm going to make the motion that we, we authorize the road crew to pick up two more loads of cold patch, and then we'll see where we need to go from there. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay, next item on the agenda is uh, equipment repair. The little dump truck body uh, shifts back a bit when you go to use it and is in, in need of some repair. Uh, Frank got two estimates. Uh, there's one for $525 and one for $800. It spells out what work is, is outlined in, in both of those quotes and it's basically identical between the two. Um, seeing as it's, it's needed, and I'd prefer to get this out of the way now before we get into the, the cold season, I'd, uh, I'd, I'd like to, to go the route of authorizing Frank or one of the road crew to get it to, um, let me open it up and see which shop was which on that, the, the $525 quote one, get them in and have them just fix it, get it out of the way and get it done. And that was uh, Dobbs Welding Service, LLC, was the, the $525 one. Um, that a motion or not? Um, well, it's mostly just fishing for thoughts and opinions okay. from, from Jim and Irene, but thank you. You guys in I, agree, rough agreement with that? Yeah. Okay. I was just trying to pull up the other quote. Uh, yeah, it's, um, there should, it should be two pages on one, one attachment. Does that include the big truck too? No, it's just a little truck. The, the big oh. truck we got to get estimates on because uh, based on what Frank described, it's going to be a situation where we'd have to talk about getting it uh, like sandblasted or, or like bead blasted and then powder coated on the underside as well. Um, and I think there's something, there's something oh. additionally wrong with, um, I think it's the auger on that. I'm trying to remember what he was telling there's me on the something phone. something wrong with the lift gate. Yeah, it, yeah it's something on the, the back end of the truck, but I, I need to get the details from Frank. And before we do anything at all or make any sort of considerations, we need to have at least two to three written quotes, depending on what the price comes in as. Mm. Um, with this, this is below the, the threshold that we, we need to have the, the yeah, the, the, the number of quotes in place. So I'll make the motion to authorize the road crew to have the little truck repaired for the cost of $525 by Dobbs Welding. I'll second. Okay. No, wait. That was, uh, sorry, I got ahead Roll of myself. There. I was writing. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. Next item is the census 2020. Uh, we received a request to use the meeting room or outdoor pavilion. Uh, there was an email on June 12th from Donna Dobb. Um, I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of splitting the difference on this. I, I don't think it would be a problem if we permitted them to use the building, provided that they observe proper social distancing. Uh, but on that same token, they could just as easily use the pavilion. The only re the only difference is they wouldn't have access to a bathroom. I don't have a problem if they use the building, as long as they maintain current recommended practices for social distancing and everyone's wearing a mask. Would you like to make that as a motion, Irene? So then the other question is, are they only allowed to be there when I'm there? Or how is that going to work? I just thought of that right now. Well, the, the only thing I could suggest in that point is we give them a key to the front door, like we do for the, the, the elections folks. And we just leave the, the alarm off early morning. I come through in the evening. I come through, I come through in the evening. There's a strange echo there. A strange echo there, but... We, uh, we uh, arm the system up. Arm the the system up. Are we generally okay with that? Yeah, it's fine. Okay. okay. So, Irene, was that a motion? All right. Walk me through this. Make a motion to allow the census, the, the census twenty twenty, uh, to utilize the meeting room. What was the date? Well, there's a bunch of them. And she said, she gave us a bunch of dates saying, we'd like to use all of those, use it all those dates, but we're 
okay with just one of them. If that's all you want, let us be in there. I mean, there's one, two, three, four, five, six days. That's fine. Okay, bear with me for just a moment, guys. Yeah, oh, that's okay. okay. I guess, do they have to set anything up in the room? According to the email, she just has down here swearing in enumerator, sensor takers, verifying ID, completing documentation, and issuing electronic devices. So, um, I don't know. I can ask. <laughs> yeah, it's just finding out what items that she needs in the room or he. Uh, um, I mean, it, it sounded like they just need a room with a table and some chairs and oh. Yeah. Yeah. Is Dan is Dan trying to flag us? Okay. Um, so Peter has paused for a minute. So uh, hang on. I just I asked Dan to unmute. I got a I have an emergency phone call. I got to make. I apologize. Yeah, I, as a resident of Marion Township, I have a concern about the township building being used so many different times without it being deep cleaned at this point. It was cleaned for the election. The board, uh, Berks County Board of Elections had hired someone to come in before and after elections to clean. Yes, that's after the election. Now you're allowing a group of people, uh, unknown number of people, to use the township building more than once, possibly several times, and not deep clean it again. On her email, she has down current guidelines have a social distancing slash masks and sanitize workspace. Yeah, if uh, if board would feel better, I I have a um, release agreement, a waiver agreement that I've had for other municipalities that specifically mentions COVID nineteen. So it's basically a release of any liability um, if somebody is going to rent any facilities or use any facilities uh, from the municipality. So we could allow it or allow one of those dates or all those dates and then just conditioned upon them uh, executing a release agreement. They should take temperatures too before people come in. Yeah, that means that protects them, but how does it protect us for the future? Well, the agreement says that they release and waive any claims against the township, um, period. So, um, it also requires them to follow all CDC, the Pennsylvania Department of Health guidelines. That's on them. Okay, but I think you're missing my point. No, my yeah. point is that after these folks leave the building, is it going to be cleaned so that it, it it's protects us when we're there? That's a good point. I don't know the answer to that one. I mean, you know, you use could, the pavilion. <laughs> I'm sorry. They could use the pavilion, which is outside. I I don't have a problem with that, but I do have a problem with them using the township building, and then us as residents going there to use it after they've been there and it hasn't been deep cleaned. It looked like the request was use the building or the pavilion. Mm -hmm. right. So I guess let's put this motion on hold. We'll wait till Peter gets back. Okay. It was just a question and a concern. No, I appreciate it. Nope. We appreciate now, it. Thank you. All yeah. you all you folks have to go in there and sit in the meeting room with places where they sit. And I'm only concerned about your safety as well as mine. At this point, the building's closed to the public, so no one is in there. Right. 
And contamination from surfaces is, is not how this virus is spread. It's, it's aerosolized from people speaking and breathing and coughing. So current science shows us that you can't get it from touching a surface and licking your fingers. Um, oh. it's, yeah, it's, it's aerosolized. You have a, I agree with you, if you're in an indoor situation, you have a higher risk of, of spreading it. Uh, but when it comes to how you get sick from it, it it's, it's from talking and speaking and coughing. It's not from you picking up something that someone else touched that has the virus. So. Okay. All right. Yeah. Uh, no, you're no, the, thank you. <laughs> you're yeah. the specialist in this. No, so no. I trust and as, you. And as Sue said, we're not using the meeting room. No one's going into there. So, um, you know, that, that's not a concern. We're tucked away in the office. <laughs> yeah. Well, if they have to abide abide by the, the state guidelines right now, right. they're going to take temperatures, they're going to sterilize and whatever things whenever they leave. So mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I don't think taking temperatures is, a, is necessarily a state recommendation. Being masked is and having hand sanitizer and keeping um, a, a six feet uh, distance. But I don't think taking temperatures is, is part of that guideline. That's just a good practice. And that in and of itself is not necessarily accurate. Because um, again, you know, like it depends on your thermometer, but it depends on who's taking the, the temperature probe, et cetera, et cetera. There's so many what if factors. So, I mean, we just want to keep, we want to keep people safe. So uh, other than the, the tabling for the time being, because that's, I think gonna gonna get really close if not exceed the the next meeting. Um, do we want to provisionally just based on any other discussion that we have allow them to use the pavilion rather than the building? Yes, yes I think I mean, be we can always we can always expand that to the building based on if we we set proper requirements or mitigating factors or anything like that between now and the next meeting. But um, bare minimum, the pavilion should should do what they need. Yeah. Okay. So I would say let's. Let's proceed with allowing them for the pavilion. I'll make the motion to allow the census to use the pavilion for their request. We'll second that. For all the dates, for one of the dates? For, for all the dates, thank you, sir. And I will just make sure I tell her that there is no bathroom. So Irene seconded that. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Yeah. Hi. Okay, next item on the agenda is the high school internship. Uh, Irene, do you want to give us a quick synopsis on yeah, that? Yeah, um, Lynn Engstadt from uh, Conrad Weiser High School had contacted me about trying to see if we could arrange an internship with a high school student coming into the office. And I... Uh, spoke to her recently because we're not a full-time um, facility. None of us keep regular hours at the office. Um, I just discussed with her what things would be on our ends. And um, uh, she's, I guess, mulling over that information. Um, I said, you know, the student would be allowed to attend the meetings, attend the, the workshop meetings, things like that. I could create a project, but for right now, I'm just waiting to hear back from them because of what their requisites are with their internship program is a little bit different from what we can offer on a routine basis. So she's going to get back to me, see if that's something that would fit within their program. Okay. Yeah. Depending on what they come back with, this could either be something that doesn't, doesn't pan out or it could be something that would be interesting and exciting for the, the person involved. Uh, for example, the, the meetings that we do, we could have them running the, the recording portion of it or, um, assisting with audiovisual stuff, or once we're back in the office, making sure that we have uh, the photocopying stuff done ahead of the meeting with with Sue. So there's there's a lot of opportunities for for that. But you're right, barring the the workshop meeting and uh, the board of supervisors meeting, there's not not a huge not a amount lot. of structural, basis, like reliable, right? yeah. time based work. Um, so I'll look forward to hearing an update next month on on how we want to go forward with that, or, or if they want to even go forward with that. Okay, next item on the agenda is the office windows, uh, replacement thereof. Uh, 
this was something that we had uh, tasked Jim with, and he received uh, one estimate so far from Mike's remodeling. Um, we're still waiting on any of the other estimates to come back in, correct, Jim? Yeah, that's the only one that we've received. Um, okay. Obviously, it's it's not a huge amount of money. We don't have to uh, advertise it or anything. So at this point, I don't know if you want to table it till next meeting or if you just want to approve Mike's estimate and let's get it done and make I'm, the offer. I'm we, let's give him a little bit more time. Uh, Troy, so, was, Troy was in, Troy Brubaker was in the office and measured. Okay, good. I was going to say, has not given us an estimate yet. Sue might hate me for it, but I'd like to have at least, even, even if it's below the threshold, I'd like to have at least two or three written estimates just by I think it's a good idea just it, it prevents anybody from saying you're playing favorites favorites, 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 favorites. I agree I agree you can call you can Troy call. tomorrow and tell him hey we need your estimate <laughs> mm -hmm. um so yeah I, I have really not a strong objection I mean the the price isn't outlandish it's it's not cheap but it's not outlandish for the one that we got from Mike's remodeling so I'm curious to see where the other any of the other estimates that we get come in at um, mm -hmm. So I would say next month, let's let's kind of keep that in the forefront of our minds as we should make a decision at that point once we have the three in hand. Because to your point, Jim, uh, we need to do something about those windows sooner rather than later would be ideal. But I, I think an extra thirty days isn't gonna isn't gonna kill us. Let's pray it doesn't thunderstorm. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll cross my fingers oh, and I'll, yeah. I'll bring some towels over. Um, Okay, so the next item that we have on the agenda is the Federal Motor Carrier Safety Administration, the FMCSA Drug and Alcohol Clearinghouse. Um, according to PSATS, this is the CDI <coughs> Drug and Alcohol Testing Program that we are required to register with. Uh, this allows us to check CDL driver's license violations yearly, and we need to buy queries at $1.25 per query. Um, based on the fact that we only have one person that has a CDL, no, we have two. Oh, we do. We okay. Well, thank you. Well, they they so they took Frank off of the program when he was going through his chemo okay. because of that. Um, so we would have three, um, but we only have two, and they recommend that um, you buy double the amount of you buy queries for double the amount of people that you have. So basically, the way I understood it was that is so we can go in and check the licenses and that PSATs can go in and check the licenses. I may be wrong on that. It's just, it's, I don't know. Nobody, well, I, 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 I've called a few secretaries and nobody seems to quite know the ins and outs well, of this yet. If we're talking at four at a dollar 25, that's, uh, I, I don't it, think it's. It's, it's. Apparently we're supposed <laughs> to be checking the licenses yearly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Not I think that's cheap anymore. Yeah, I was going to say that's that's a it's a can of soda anymore. Yeah, it's not I mean, the newspaper bank. the newspaper is more expensive than that. Yeah. Yeah, we're we're talking a total expenditure of five dollars. Right. Right. So. I just wanted to have it approved because it is a cost. Mm -hmm. Oh no, no, I, I you're absolutely right on that. But I'm saying I, I think at this point, I'm okay with allowing for the five dollar expense for checking the. Uh, Checking them. If we really want to use the five dollars to the fullest, we can do the inquiry twice for each person. <laughs> but um, I don't think there's a need, though. No, I, I don't think there is either. But uh, I'll make a motion to purchase four of the needed FMCSA queries at a dollar twenty-five per query. Second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. Okay. The final agenda item for the night is Act 537. Um, so as a real high level point, um, there was uh, some requests from the community to hard pull the plan, which we discussed at last month's meeting and how we didn't feel that was the, the best path forward uh, for a number of reasons, most specifically being that the DEP is uh, receptive to the idea of change. They realize that the board is now comprised of, of different individuals than it was prior and that our opinion of the current plan is, is not what it has been historically. Um, the bullet point items that I have, I, I kicked things around and I really got it down to uh, principally two functional points. I think we need to amend the plan so that the, the West End 
is not included. The original draft of the plan did not have that in there. And there's a source of hot debate about how that actually got in there. But at the end of the day, when you look at it, the, the two properties, three properties that are included on that particular portion of it, the last little stretch as you start to leave Stouchburg are both large tracts of land and they're downhill. It doesn't make sense to continue the pipe down that hill just to pick up those two properties. Um, beyond that, the other bullet point that I had was to alter the plan so that the, the first 40 or so pages focused on uh, the cost benefit analysis portion of it, not just the, the, the fact of sewer, we have choices of sewer and one thing costs one, one thing costs the other, but the actual cost benefit analysis of the impact to the community. So we have the, the actual nuts and bolts breakdown of, okay, this is the kind of failure that would be required to make this work from a funding standpoint. Unless we had 60% of the, the outlined properties fail and had a grant package of at least X number of dollars, we haven't hit that tipping point yet. I think that's an absolutely critical consideration because if you can outline need, if you can prove that, okay, we're not talking about six houses that have a problem out of 160, we're talking about 100 out of 160. If you can prove that, you can prove the need. Beyond the need, if you can prove that it's affordable, then you start talking the realm of municipal project. Otherwise, in my mind, that falls under best technical guidance and remediation. Um, so that way you don't, you don't have an entire town of people on expensive holding tanks. That's not sensible either, but you don't have a situation where you're ripping everything out for the roots when 90% of the, the systems are still okay. That's, that's where I want to approach this from so that it, it, it relies on a very clearly outlined number and statistic based approach to can, do we need to do this? can we afford to do this? And if the answer is both yes, then we do it. Otherwise, no. And I, that needs to be very clearly outlined in the plan. And if approved, that would give us what I feel is the, the necessary protection from what a lot of people, myself included, have the concern of, of being forced into a project that we can't pay for. Jim? I agree. Irene? I absolutely agree. Yeah. No, I'm 100% with Peter on this, and I want everyone in the community to know and understand we are working to do what's best for everyone. You know, we're working hard. Um, I'm sorry to see that there's a new letter circulating from the group that uh, initiated the fight against the sewer that almost accuses myself and Peter of flipping sides, and, and that's certainly not the case at all. Um, we're doing what we can with what we have and, and the card that's been dealt to us. Um, myself, I, you know, I was not on the board when the, when the um, plan was put through, and unfortunately, Peter was outvoted. So I just want to reiterate to everyone in the community, again, we're working hard to do what's best for everyone and, and working with what we have currently. And, and I'm... Did we, did we lose you there, Irene? It kind of dropped off on, on your last sentence. I, I lost you for a second there. Oh, geez. Okay. Yeah. So uh, we lost you on kind of the last bit of that, I think, where you had said that, you know, we, we have, we're dealing with the, the card that we were dealt and then yep. it just kind and of I, trailed off. No, I just want to reiterate, you know, um, I'm a hundred percent behind your plan. Um, you know, trying to do what's best for everyone. Thank you. And thank you, Jim, for, for kind of seeing eye to eye on that. The, 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 the takeaway that I have on this is, we need to do ultimately what's the best fit for everybody, the individual homeowners, the community. So there's, like I said, a simple common sense approach to this to me, which is uh, in my mind, nobody wants to force somebody out of house and home for one reason or the other, whether it's putting in a very big expensive public sewer or forcing a, a large portion of the, the demographic to be on, like I said, holding tanks, which are very expensive to, to maintain. Um, we got to find that balance. We have to clearly outline it and we have to make it so that it's uh, really within the confines of the law and regulation, something that is, is actually achievable, which I'm, I'm confident that we can do it. We just have to, to get our, our, ourselves lined up, coordinated, and uh, we're, we have the unique opportunity that uh, DEP is much more receptive to this idea than I think they've been to uh, not just us, but anybody else in, in previous years based on what both Jim and Andy had said they're willing to entertain things that they haven't done for more than a decade for other things in terms of review. So 
Right, because <clears throat> they, they no longer do um, preliminary unofficial reviews, but they've agreed to do that in this case. So they, they don't need an official revised plan to be submitted to them. They're just looking for something in writing which mm -hmm. outlines what you were saying earlier about what your uh, two potential changes might be. So that's what they're looking for. They said they would preliminarily review it, give us feedback, and meet with us. Okay. I'll, I'll based on the agreement from Irene and Jim, I'll get that list in a, I think a more executive format to send over to Jim to get over to the DEP. But that's, that's how I want to tackle it. We don't have to throw the baby out with the bathwater to, to steal that idiom. The plan itself, we can, we can retrofit, we can recraft the first 40 some odd pages to reflect the, the concerns and the requirements that we have around that. A lot of the gathered statistical data can be used to paint a picture of a potential problem, which I think by the definition of the plan, having a, a, a result or like a well survey or anything like that is a, a potential, but we don't necessarily have to have it paint the picture of total failure. It's, it's not something that is necessarily indicative of that. It can be, but that's one of several avenues that you could go down under, under how you think about that. So I'll get that together. I'll circulate that with the rest of the board. And uh, seeing as we're in alignment and agreement with that, I'll turn that over to Jim McCarthy. Thank you. Right. Okay, that concludes all of the agenda items. Um, I don't have any comments. Uh, Sue, I didn't see the, the police report across the inbox. Um, it, it was uh, on it was the last thing. Was it? I, I apologize. Okay, so barring the fact that I don't have that, and I'm, gonna, I'm not gonna waste time hunting. Uh, hi, Dan, I'll, I'll unmute you in a second, hang tight. Um, I'll recap it at next month's rather than force people to, to wait for me while I dig through the inbox. Um, okay. Well, it so, was on, I don't, well, you separated everything, but it was on that second agenda items. I think I emailed you the agenda and then the items. It's on the items all the way at the end. Okay. I'll look for it. And if I can find it between now and we, when we end the meeting, I'll recap. Otherwise, I will move it to next month. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Dan. Yes, Jim, uh, could you unmute Jim Donadini as well, please? Uh, yep, that's Jim's iPad, I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah. So I've asked him to unmute. Okay, there we go. Oh. Should be unmuted. Okay, Mr. Donadini, you had a question that you posed earlier to me, and I had suggested to maybe approach Andy George with that question. Would you like to do that? Yes, please. Andy, I, I, I'm curious, and maybe you don't have the answer to this. Is there a protocol to, I mean, bondage, releasing a bond is a way of um, releasing Landmark from their obligations, is there an official process for them to say, say the clubhouse, for instance, just as an instance, um, and there isn't a bond on that, it might be a bad example, but is there a way for that, then us to be notified that we officially own that property? Is there, okay, I thought you were going in a different direction. There's an official process to release the bond um, yep. After a request from a developer, that whole process is outlined in writing in the municipality's planning code. So yeah, there there is an official process there. And then, to the extent that a bond is released, and then stuff would be turned over to the HOA, it's kind of a separate issue. Um, That's the piece that I'm I'm curious about. Is, is there a protocol for that? Well. That, if, if stuff is being turned over from the developer to the homeowner association, that's probably a process that's outlined in your, in your bylaw, not your bylaws, but in your declaration, in the, in the documents that form the homeowners association. Okay. Or there's a Pennsylvania act that, and I'm no expert on it, but that governs homeowners associations, the Planned Communities Act. So... Yeah, that, that process is outlined, um, and it's probably in your in your own association documents. Very good. Thank you. That was my only question. Okay. Okay. Thank you. 
So I've I was able to find the police report. <laughs> you were you were correct. So it was the last uh, last page of the the one attachment. Um, so last month doesn't look like there was anything overly exciting. There was similar hour, amount of hours for, for patrol use. There were I think probably generally speaking less stops and complaints than normal. There were no traffic warnings, no citations, no parking tickets. Uh, there were, however, three traffic accidents that they responded to. So that's, I think, about the same or a little higher. So uh, generally speaking, a, a less exciting month than normal from a police report standpoint. Uh, Irene, do you have any further comments? No, thank you. Jim? Oh, wait, I do have one comment. Okay. A big thank you to Sue again for always knowing where everything is, always remembering things that uh, everyone else has no clue about. So big, huge public thank you to Sue again for being wonderful and fantastic at her job. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so. You're welcome. <laughs> it's my job. As I say, the joys of living here my whole life. <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do mine without you doing what you do. Okay, Jim, do you have any comments? He's muted. Oh, okay, let's oh. unmute <laughs> unmute Jim, I apologize. I may have muted both Jims when I muted Jims. No, I have no comments, although no. I agree with Irene that Sue is a, a godsend when it comes to keeping us apprised of what's going on and helping me to get educated on what needs to be done. Well, thank you for saying that. Okay. You're welcome. Andy, do you have any comments? I'll, I'll kind of piggyback on that. Uh, it's Sue, Sue Stabby Appreciation Day. But yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I work with a lot of municipal secretaries, and Sue, I can just say, is top notch. So, well, thank you. You know, you guys are lucky in Marion Township. I think I should have been a detective, not a secretary. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sue, do you have any comments? I don't have anything else. Oh, Thank I, you, I, everyone, <laughs> for your comments. <laughs> okay, seeing no additional items on the agenda, I will make a motion to adjourn. The time is now 8.42 p.m. Thank you. Is there a second? Good night, everyone. Wait, is there a second? Oh, hold on, second, hold, on second. hold on, Irene. Hold on, Irene. We need a second on that. Either you or Jim. <laughs> Somebody's got to second that, otherwise the meeting's still going. A second. Roll call, Peter. Aye. Irene. Aye. Jim. Aye. All right. 842. Meeting adjourned. Thank you, everyone, okay. for coming out and stay safe. And we'll see you at next month's meeting, if not sooner. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Bye. Take care.